You got a question for that? That means you got to love the Lord with all that you got. And if you're going to love him, give him all that, because you ain't got love that for flesh, you don't want that. And love the Lord with all that you got. This is what he was telling them. And then he said, I'm going to tack a little bit more onto it. He said, and then you love your neighbor as yourself. So the, what, how important is love in the kingdom? Huh? How important is love in the kingdom? How important is love in here? Yeah, God wants to send me to uh, this love chapter for a reason. Because uh, we are uh, saying lip service that we love one another, but sometimes we don't show that. You know, love is not a whole lot of lip service. Love is action. Yeah, you got to show something if you love somebody. Yeah, you, it ain't a whole lot of talking. You got to do something. Love is not only an action word, it's also a choice. You got to choose to love people. Yeah, you know, if you don't choose to love people, you don't wind up loving nobody but yourself. Yeah, my forward no more. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta choose to love somebody. How important is love in the kingdom? Uh, the, the greatest precept in the law, according to Jesus, is the commandment to love. Love must be a uh, very important in the kingdom. Jesus commanded us to love. He commanded us to love one another. He was so far as to say, love your enemy. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Uh, love must be important. He said, love your enemy. Yes, he said, pray for those who despite for you. Yes, do good by those. You, you, you don't try to do evil for evil. You overcome evil with good. So what he said, love will hide a multitude of sin. Yeah, you gotta love somebody. Outside yourself. <laughs> pray for those who hurt you. And if you do this, he said, you'll be the children of your father, which is in heaven. So uh, Jesus is talking pretty clearly here. Yes, a love of God. You got to uh, not only love God, he said you got to love your spouse, yes, love your children, yeah. love your neighbors, yes. and even love your enemy. That's a commandment to do that. Yes, so that, that tells me right there that love is very important. Yes, huh? Love is very important. Yes, the love... The God of the universe is nothing but love. That's his very nature, is love. Although uh, we may not fully understand why God does everything he does, but the motivation of everything he does is love. Yeah, so if we're going to be the children of God, we got to have a little love in us. Uh, yeah, we'll say it sometimes, but man, when you look at that sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to go out and sit beside him. Um, somebody said, I'm going to jump up and go to my John 3.16. Yes. 
16, it said, God so loved the world yes, sir. that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, sir. And then towards the human race, it said in Romans 5 and 8, he commended Amen. his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God loved the first, and then when he sent his son, his son just lavished his love for us. Yes, sir. Yeah, he died for us. So between the Father and the Son, they love us. Yeah, so we ought to love somebody. Yeah, we ought to not mind who sits out of us or who goofs something out of says something to us. Yeah, we ought to show a little love every now and then. Yeah, and the Bible says love is like all on the wheels of old feet. It empowers us to keep God's commandments. <laughs> There's something else I like where Paul said we don't love you enough. Yeah, Paul said, yeah, Paul said in the love chapter. I know y'all have been there before. He said, he said, if you ain't got a little love, you ain't enough. Yeah, he wrote it. In, 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 uh, in, in um, First Corinthians, you, First Corinthians 13, we call it the love chapter. So love must be very important. Yeah, Paul wrote all that a person might do within the body of Christ is come is counted as nothing unless the deeds are come com accompanied by love. Your deeds that you do uh, for God, for somebody else. If you ain't got some love in it, you ain't something. You really ain't got nothing. Yeah, that's what Paul said. I, I, I go out with Paul. He said, you can speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. He said, you just like a salad bread or a chicken stick. Otherwise, you're still in it. Yeah, if you ain't got no love in there, you're in there. That's what he said. You just talking loud, saying nothing. In the love chapter, he says, you can have the gifts of prophecy and understand all business and all knowledge. You can have all faith that you can move mountains, but have not love, you're nothing. You still ain't nothing. Yeah, all of that is, you don't want your gift to stay that you do to count for something. You don't want to wind up being nothing. I mean, you can, you can take Paul at his word or, or not, but I believe Paul. You can be stored. He said, look at this one. He said, you can restore your wounds to feed the poor and give your body to be burnt. But having not love, it profits you not. So how important is love in the kingdom? Yeah, it's, a, it's a shame to do all of that and then it profits you nothing. Huh? Yeah, when I do something, I want to count for something. You know, the angels in the heavens are recording what they do. Yeah, put it down. Yeah, yeah when we get there, you want to say, well done. Yeah. God, you've been faithful, sir. Yeah, you've been faithful over a few things. Yeah, hit yeah. into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the Bible teaches that motivation of all spiritual gifts must be love. Come on. Yeah, I'm talking spiritual gifts now. Just go right in there, too, because if you're talking spiritual gifts, they must be love. See, I don't believe Paul was speaking against the use of spiritual gifts, but rather teaching that they must operate with love. Your gift must operate in love. Yeah. Either you can be a, a van, evangelist, feed the poor, yeah. prophesy, yes, and have all kind of faith, but it must be exercised by love. Yes. Yeah. 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 You go out there trying to get somebody to say, you need a little love. Yes, yeah. Sometimes they won't pay more attention to you than what you say. Right. So you got to show them the love sometimes. Yes, yeah. You feed the hunger, feed the poor. And you see somebody sitting on the side of the road, you don't just go and dump something to him. Oh, you walk over to him and give it to him nicely. Yes, they see how kind you act. Yes, Show him a little, little bit. They say, oh, wonder what church you go to. I'm going down there. <laughs> yeah, but if you don't show them a little they don't want to show up around you. Yeah, you got to show a little kindness every now and then. Uh, this is challenged us to, uh, to be sure our hearts are filled with the love of Christ before we take on any kind of ministry. If you ain't got no love up in there, then you don't need to be taking on no ministry. Right. Yeah, because you're going to need a little love. Yeah. A little kindness. Yeah, yeah. you're going to have to show a little kindness. Yeah. And if I was to that, then you got to show a little tenderness. Mix right. <laughs> 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 it up and together. I'll tell you, when you put up your recipe, on, yeah, you ought to have a couple spoonful of love in it. On, yeah, one or two spoonful of kindness. Yes, yeah, one or two spoonful of compassion. Know how to get loud with me, and people will know how to get loud with you. Yeah, then I ran across that word of gap. 
Father and God's unconditional love towards his son and then towards his people. And this kind of love is a giving, selfless, expecting nothing in return a kind of love. Yeah, yeah, I can love you and you ain't looking for nothing for me. Yeah. I can love you for you just, I can love you, ain't nothing you can do for me. <laughs> I can love you, you can't stop me from loving. There's nothing way to stop me from Yeah, yeah, because my love ain't based on you. It don't encourage us to get rid of people in our life who are difficult to get along with. Yeah. Whether, whether they are friends, yeah. family, or queen. Otherwise, it, it, it causes you to get along with people that are normally you would just throw them away. Yeah. So I can bet all to do with that. Yeah. Even if it's family, even if it's friends, yeah. or queens, or what. And put a gap in love will put up with that. Yeah, you gotta have a little bit of that unconditional love. But I'm telling you, you're gonna run across friends will be free for one day, and the next day you see them, they could be to change up on you. Yeah, and don't get the wrong family will change up on you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah they'll, do, they'll change up a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, got, you gotta have this yeah, a gap in love. Yeah, and I said, but, but uh, you don't want that kind of attitude. You don't want this kind of attitude or uh, uh, this throwaway love. You, you are, uh, uh, because true love puts up with people uh, who will be easier to give up on. That's true love. Put up with you, uh, it's easier to give up on, but I'm gonna put up with you now. Yeah, yeah. If you love people, you will uh, rejoice in the blessings they receive. And stop acting pride and seek glory for yourself. In fact, true love does not seek it on. Paul said, but he will set aside his own plans and his own agenda just to help another person in need. That's true love. Yeah, I can't help you today because I got to go somewhere. I got something to do. No, true love will set that aside. Yes, sir. See, I'm going to help you and then I'm coming back to yes, do what I got to do. That's true love. Yeah, you, yeah, you love somebody then. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got a couple more and then we'll let you go. <laughs> Kingdom, we kingdom's kids, and the king this and the king that. Oh, right. We need to act like it. Act like you're a kingdom's kid. Yeah. Yeah. Kingdom people. Yeah. Does not find joy in sin. Kingdom people don't find joy in sin. But rejoice is in the truth. God the people had nothing to do with evil, but has everything to do with what's right and true. Huh? Does not mean we stop loving. So we don't lose faith in the possibility of what God might become. Yeah. Of what people might become. I say God, but possibility of what people might become. Otherwise, we don't give up on people. Yeah, we, we, we don't look at the people what they is. We look beyond that far. Yeah, we see them through the eyes of Christ. Yeah, we're not looking at them. We're we not looking at the person in a house. Because we know what's in the person. That's what you look at. Yeah, we look beyond that fall and we see that need. Yeah. See, you never give up on, you never give up on nothing that God can change life for the better. You don't give up on a person when God can change that person for the better. You don't give up on it. I mean, how would you, how can you give up on somebody and God say, I can change that person? Yeah, you see, you might see somebody over there alcoholic years ago. Don't yes, matter, years ago. Right. Yeah, there's a street laying on the side of the street years ago. Yes, sir. Did you like to see the next year ago? I'm going to clean them up and set them up inside you. Yeah, you don't give up on people. Never give up on people. Now the capital, of, the capital of don't give up on people. Yes, I mean, our kind of love is thin. The capital of the people. Well, we thank you. I'm going to say another thing that I'm going to say. <laughs> Sometimes you might have to accept a, a 
a little hardship, yes, uh, a little rejection, yes, uh, but continue to build up and encourage each other. Uh, true love means that determine what is best for another person and then do it. Determine what is best for somebody and then do it. You got to do something. Love is action. Yeah, love is a choice. I choose to love you. And if I choose to love you, then I'm going to do something better. I'm going to show you that I love you. Now, I ain't going to just do a whole lot of lip service saying what I do. I got to show you something. Well, I hope y'all got something better for that because I ain't got no more fun to
That's a recipe that we all can embrace. I say that's a recipe that we all can embrace. Amen. Amen. With head bowed and eyes closed. As you meditate on what God has released through one of the ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven, you may be in a place where that you think that no one loves you. You've been cast down and cast out. You've been downtrodden. You've been abused, misused, talked about. And you haven't experienced the true love of God. Today is a good day to come into the hands of a loving father. Whom John said in 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, verse 18 says, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. It's a decision that you have to make. It's a choice that you have to submit to. If, if you haven't truly experienced the love of God, I, I promise you when you come into acquaintance with the love of God, you wouldn't need anyone else love to suffice the love that God has poured out and given to you from him. But then he'll teach us how to love the unlovable. In other words, you and I once were unlovable. But yet God still loved us because he demonstrated or commended his love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Thank you, God, that you're not waiting for us to get right. You died for us when we wouldn't fight. So, God, we thank you that you demonstrated, not lip service, but you hung up on the cross. You, they stretched you wide and hung your heart and you bled and died. But on the third day, getting up on it, you got up with all power and authority in heaven and in earth. And you have given it to us to reign and rule in the earth. So, Father, there may be someone in here today that might have confessed, they might believe in their heart that you died and, and, and you raised your son from the dead, but they, but they really haven't experienced your agape love in a way. Because certain things in their lives are not going the way they think it should be. And they think now through a false accusation through the kingdom of darkness saying that if God loved you, why is he letting you go through all of this? But God, let somebody know the day that in spite of all that they might go through, that you still love them beyond their wildest imagination. So if there's someone here today that just if you just want to come up, you just want to come up to the altar and, 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 and listen, and listen, listen to here. It's amazing that everybody is going to be with the Lord, but we can't love one another down here. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't put enough emphasis on it. Now, everybody's going to be with the Lord, but nobody want to love one another down here. Uh, this is just a preparation. That God trains and teaches us how he put up with mankind. How he was merciful with mankind. How he was gracious to mankind. Uh, that he poured out all of his wrath on his son Jesus Christ in the stead for you and I. Because of what Adam done that represented all of us. And yet Jesus said, how in the world can you expect your father in heaven to forgive you of your trespasses and you won't forgive your brother of their trespasses? Oh, come on now. We're talking scripture here now. Oh, my God. This is a place of exchange. If, if you're here today, now you know where you at. You know exactly where you at. And if you still have art in your heart,
heart against somebody that hasn't even done anything. Sometimes folk just don't like you because where you look. I don't know why they do it, but it, somehow they just do it. It's one thing for somebody that done something out of the norm to you. And it takes the love of God to, to constrain you to do what the Lord said you should do. You should love them in spite of themselves. Because sometimes we think that we've never done anybody wrong. Come on, let me help you. Along the way, you've done something wrong. You've done somebody wrong. Thank God that we did it right. But if you're still in that place of pride, that you saying, well, 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 the Lord know my heart. Yes, that's why he's telling you, you better deal with it before he keep dealing with you. All you gotta do is just step over. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna prophesy and start pointing you out. If you know that there's something in your heart that is not from God, somebody might have done something you think that says something, and you still holding on to it every time, I ain't gonna forgive them. I'll forget it, but I ain't gonna forgive them. No, you still have to forgive them. Because every time they say something, it comes right back up. They're telling you, you haven't let it go. You better let it go today. I know God sent this message for one, for one reason and one purpose only. To get us back in the perfect love of God. In other words, listen to here, listen. And because nobody want to move because we want to think that, uh, I ain't done anything to anybody. I haven't given everybody. I ain't done uh, yeah. Okay. Listen to him. Do we think God just done this? Just, just, do we think God just released this sound just to be wasting time? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't do this just to be wasting time. Listen, one thing I learned through walking with God. Forgiveness is not always for the other person. Forgiveness is for you and I. Lord have mercy. Because, because forgiveness, if you don't release people and let people go, it's just like a spiritual counsel. It's just eat at you. It's eat at you. Every time they mention their name, Every time you see them, something on the inside start, start to move and you, and, and this way you know it. When you run into people and you run away from them, that, that's a sign. I say that's a sign. I, 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 don't, I don't mind telling you the truth. I don't mind telling you the truth. Because I know you got to be processed to deal with people if you can do ministry on a level with God the way he want to do it. That means that folk can still plot Boy, Steve, and you still gotta love them the way the Lord wants you to love them. And God don't require you to get in a debate with Him. Because people mess around and say, Lord, how many times should I forgive those that have sinned against me? Jesus said, I'm gonna throw a number out here, Peter. Seventy times seven. In other words, as many times as it requires you to forgive them, you forgive them. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. Some of y'all can get set free today. I say some of y'all can get set free today. Some, some of y'all, God want to set free. Lord have mercy. But you won't move. Some of y'all, God want to set you free, but you stubborn. Lord have mercy. Lord, y'all, y'all gonna make me more than prophetic here now. Listen, when you come to this place of exchange, you ain't gotta stay here all day. Just do your obedience of stepping out, but you stay as long as you have to. Uh, I ain't laying no hands on you. We ain't laying no hands on you today. Sometimes all you need to do is go to the Lord and let the Lord know that, Lord God, I believe that you're releasing me from this oppression. Yeah. 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 Ha. Yeah. And let me, let me wait and release some of y'all. Listen, if you need to leave, please leave quietly. Please leave quietly, but we still have some more business to take care of after the communion. But we never want to rush God. We never want to rush God. Never want to rush God. Listen. Listen to him. Just because people reject you, don't mean that God rejected you. Ever seen. Just because people 
reject you don't mean that God rejected you. Do, do we really know how many people rejected Jesus? Do we really know how many people rejected Jesus? It's a lot of people that rejected Jesus during his time when he walked the earth and there's still people rejecting Jesus right now. So don't you get moved by people rejecting the Christ that's in you. Your job is to keep loving them and doing the will of God. Some of y'all need to come up here. There's some folk on your job that some of y'all need to come up here. You wonder why you ain't getting a release? Because you still holding on to some stuff that some folk on the job and you thought has blocked. Oh, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are to let them go. You are to let them go. I said you are to let them go. You should not let them go. Hold up. What happened? What a release in your life because they think that they Y'all, when you when you go and some more y'all need to come on up here right now before I start calling y'all. Listen, when you go on the job, when you go on the job, when you go on the job, you gotta stop going on and thinking that you're working unto them. You gotta go on and working unto the Lord. And when it's time for God to promote you, they can't stop God from promoting you. Thank God for that. 